Welcome to this very special webcast on the announcement of HGST's Active Archive system. I'm Dave Tang, the SVP and GM of the Elastic Storage Platforms Group here at HGST. Now, before we get started with today's presentation and Q&A, I'd like to point out that um, today's webcast may contain some forward-looking statements, and I would encourage you to refer to our website as well as our SEC filings to get a full understanding of the risk factors involved with the content of the webcast. Now, there's a lot of information on our website already about the product, the Active Archive system. So rather than dive into a lot of the specifications and details, I'd like to spend time talking about the market trends that have driven us to create this new category of storage system, as well as some of the unique aspects of the design and uh, innovation that has gone into the system. And then finally, talk about some of the vectors of transformation that the system is enabling in the marketplace. So first off, let's talk a little bit about the market. So there's a lot of attention on the vast growth in data that's being created. Market research firm IDC refers to this as the digital universe. And the data that's being created is growing at a rapid rate, doubling every two years. And in fact, growing tenfold during the period shown on this graph. But a lot of that data is transient data, or perhaps is a replica of uh, data that is already being stored somewhere else. So not all of that is necessarily worth uh, being stored. For a storage company, the more important area to focus on is the valuable and useful data that's being generated. And as you can see in this chart, uh, the portion of the overall data being uh, created that is deemed to be useful and valuable is growing, both in terms of capacity and in terms of percentage. So back in uh, 2013, at the beginning of this graph, only 22% of the data being created was deemed to be useful and valuable. But out in 2020, IDC projects that that's going to grow to 37% of the total data. So you have this compound effect of not only an increase in the total amount of data being created, but also an increase in the portion of that data that is deemed useful and valuable. Now, um, it should be no surprise why that uh, data is growing in capacity and in, in volume. It's because we see almost on a daily basis stories in the press about how companies are able to make better decisions based on the, the data that they have. They're able to boost productivity as well as profitability. And in many cases, they're even able to predict the future uh, to drive their own business as well as to serve customers better. Now, another interesting thing about uh, what's happening in the industry is the projection for the storage capacity to be shipped into the industry. And that's reflected in the blue bars here. And this is a very substantial market. And, and even in the, the higher growth areas, such as um, uh, scale out object storage systems, um, th th it's a sizable market today. It's, it's about a $15 billion market this year, growing to uh, near $22 billion out in 2017. So very significant. But what's even more significant is the gap between the capacity being projected to be shipped and the useful and valuable data that is being created. So you can see that uh, gap is increasing over time, and that's creating a greenfield opportunity. And we recognize that this needs a fundamentally different type of system and solution to store this data. Systems that are more scalable, that provide faster access to data, that are highly affordable and simple to deploy and scale. Now, they need to be affordable and, and simple to scale and deploy because IT resources and budgets simply aren't growing as fast as the volume of, of data. So this needs a fundamentally different approach. And that's exactly what HGST has done with our Active Archive system. This system represents a complete turnkey scale-out object storage system designed specifically for cloud data centers. It provides 4.7 petabytes of raw storage capacity in a single rack. That's the highest density within a rack, which translates to the highest data center efficiency. So within a given floor tile or rack space, data centers can store more information. Now, because the system was designed for active archive workloads, 
meaning it's designed to store data that is past its create and modify phase. It is more into the long-term retention phase where it could be analyzed or perhaps accessed for regulatory reasons. Um, the system has been tuned to that type of workload, which optimizes the architecture and subsequently the cost of the overall system. And because it's designed for cloud data centers, we've designed it for a fail-in-place type of, of serviceability. And that also avoids some of the costly ar architectural elements that is typical of fully redundant systems. So we're very selective about the redundancy and we provide a high level of availability and resiliency through a software-defined storage uh, system architecture. But overall, because we've designed it uh, with some of HGST's uh, storage devices that provide industry-leading power efficiency, we're able to achieve some of the lowest power consumption per terabyte uh, in the industry that, that reduces operating costs within the data center even further. And that's with all spindles running, uh, so access, fast and direct access to all data. And because we're hitting a fundamentally different price point in terms of the level of integration and innovation that we're deploying, which translates to a, a list price of $180 per terabyte, significantly below um, alternatives, including white box alternatives, we believe we can significantly beat white box economics. And that's a, that's a significant game changer because there's a common belief in the industry that if you take white box servers in storage and add software, whether it's open source or commercial software, you can achieve the lowest cost infrastructure. But we believe that through innovation and integration, we're able to provide a system that provides 50 to 70% better TCO than white box solutions. And we do that by taking a clean slate, bottoms up, purpose built design approach to the system. And that starts with HGST's helium fill drives. These helio seal drives are the only helium fill drives that are shipping in the industry today. And the nature of the helium technology provides for the highest capacity devices in the industry, which consume the lowest power per, per terabyte in the industry, and also have provided the highest proven reliability of capacity devices in, in the industry. So we, we start with that as our foundational element. But that vertical integration access to those devices is not enough. That's not enough to, to, to be a game changer for our active archive system. So we go beyond that with elements of vertical innovation. So knowing that we're using low power helium fill drives enables us to design an enclosure that packs more devices into a rack U than other commercially available enclosures. And to do that reliably, because we know that the thermal characteristics of the devices filling that enclosure uh, will maintain uh, an operating temperature and operating conditions that ensure reliability. Now, in terms of uh, the access to data, the system is designed, again, to keep all spindles uh, operating so that direct access to all the data is achieved. And because we understand the, the detailed design characteristics of the underlying drives, we can ensure that the mechanical isolation between adjacent drives is adequately managed. So there are systems out there that attempt to provide high density enclosures, but in many cases, those systems are forced to spin down drives in order to avoid mechanical interference between individual drives. Now, they may, may position those systems as providing power management in spinning down drives, but the reality is that unless you have the expertise in the design of the underlying devices, it's difficult to design enclosures at that density and uh, with, that, with the reliability and direct access to data. Now, we don't stop there. We take our uh, activities and, and uh, innovation to an even higher level. So last month we announced the acquisition of a software company called Ampladata. Ampladata is a leading developer of advanced object storage software. We take that software and create a software defined storage system that builds upon the, the um, active archive enclosure as well as the helium fill drives. And that's what provides the scalability and the resiliency needed 
for cloud data centers. So it, it's the software that provides the erasure coding capabilities that allows massive scalability and the ability to manage through multiple device or subsystem or even system failures within a data center. And through the software, we're actually able to provide resiliency across multiple data centers. So through a feature called GeoSpread, we take the erasure coding technology known as BitSpread and we apply that um, across multiple data centers so that large cloud deployments can suffer the loss of a single data center going offline while still maintaining access to 100% of the data being serviced out of uh, the, the remaining data centers. So this capability is, is quite powerful when building out high scale and highly resilient environments. And then because we recognize that data is being retained for longer and longer periods, we want to ensure that data integrity is verified on a regular basis. So through a feature called Bit Dynamics, we go and in the background uh, verify that the data bit for bit is exactly as it was written to the system. And that's in contrast to some other systems that simply look for the presence of an object or pieces of an object uh, to validate that it still exists. So these features and capabilities are, are essential to building a resilient and scalable and affordable uh, and accessible um, active archive system for cloud storage. And through vertical innovation, we can take the value of these individual layers and provide uh, additional, additional uh, capabilities and value on top of that. So um, this system not only is exciting because of the characteristics that it provides in uh, being a high, high density, high scalability system, but also we're seeing it enable transformation in various parts of the industry in a number of different directions. So by providing a, a simple to deploy and very affordable uh, system, we, we see users that have data intensive businesses being able to transform their business. We've talked to, to businesses that run retail operations and of course they have access and can collect tremendous amounts of data. Now they're interested um, in taking that data and monetizing it in various ways and many of them already have found ways to actually sell that data to other businesses so they create new streams of revenue, new partnerships to transform their business beyond just the retail operations that they've been known for. For our partners that are cloud service providers, we also see the ability to enable their transformation. Many of them invest tremendous amounts of resources and uh, dollars into developing and standing up the infrastructure to run their cloud service. But at the end of the day, their customers really don't reward them and recognize them for putting that effort into building out the infrastructure. That's, that's expect, expected of them, that's table stakes. What those cloud service providers really want is they want to be able to focus more and more of their investments on new services and applications so that they can attract new customers. And because our system is targeted at providing new levels of value, that also allows them to extend the value that they provide to their existing customers, so they retain those customers. So overall, it enables cloud service providers to focus in areas that are more meaningful to their growth and more meaningful to the success of their customers. Similarly, with system integrators and designers who are looking to transform their business and move more into added uh, software value and, and layers of software above the system level, as well as uh, services, we enable them to focus on those areas while providing them with very robust, scalable, and affordable systems that they can uh, use to augment their portfolio. In fact, we have a number of OEM partners who we are in agreement with to supply um, our offerings as building blocks so that they can extend their portfolio and focus on the higher profitability areas of software and services. So overall, HGST is looking to enable transformation in a number of different vectors. First off is HGST ourselves in our expansion from being a leader in storage devices into offering higher value products as in this uh, active archive storage system. 
And for that data that we looked at in the beginning that has no home projected for it, we're addressing that greenfield opportunity and creating a method to effectively store that data for ongoing access and to extract value from that data. And for our partners, we're enabling them to transform so that they can focus on the areas that are most meaningful their, to their growth and to their customers. And of course, for data-centric organizations, enabling them to store more data and access more data and to monetize that data over longer periods of time, we provide them with the true ability to harness the power of their data. So that's a summary of the announcement that we're making today. Uh, before we move into the Q&A portion of our webcast, I'd like to just remind you of uh, some of the clarifications on capacity and trademarks uh, that we have. If you have a question, please uh, enter it into the question box in your interface, and we'd be happy to respond to them. OK, so let's see. We've got a number of questions already queued up here. A um, uh, question about uh, the ASP and gross margins for the uh, Active Archive system. Well, as I mentioned, the list price of the system comes out to be $180 per terabyte. Uh, and if you take that 4.7 petabyte capacity, that translates to um, $849,000 as a list price. Now, we don't break out um, the financials in terms of either revenue or gross margin on a product-by-product -product basis. Uh, so that, that information is, uh, is not available. However, I, I would say that um, we, we do want to conform to the gross margin range that, um, that our business of storage devices um, provides, which has uh, a range generally uh, in the 32% uh, area. Okay. Let's see. Um, other, other questions here. Um, um, question about HDSC's target customers and the overall uh, TAM for the active archive business. So in terms of customers, this is targeted at cloud service providers. They're the ones that need the high scalability and um, the, the resiliency that this system provides. And uh, in terms of the, the, the total market size, uh, there are really two components of that. Uh, as you recall in the, um, the data from IDC, there's the projected market, that was the blue bars at the, at the bottom. Um, out of that total market uh, that was reflected in capacity, a portion of it is uh, reflected in scale out object storage systems. And again, for this year, that market exceeds $15 billion, um, growing to uh, nearly $22 billion in 2017. So that's a sizable market that's already been uh, quantified by market research analysts. But above and beyond that is that greenfield opportunity that I mentioned where there's a projection for massive growth in valuable and useful data uh, without any storage capacity shipments associated with that. And that on a capacity level, that's projected to be equivalent to the existing market for capacity shipments out in the 2018-2019 uh, time frame. So very sizable opportunity there as well. Okay, um, we have a question about um, the, the composition of the, the storage within the active archive system. So the 4.7 petabytes of storage capacity being provided for, um, for user storage um, is a spinning disk, and that is the HGST helium-filled drives. Um, we're, we're starting off with the 8 terabyte drives. Um, although the system, because it's a multi-tier system, um, as, as many uh, software-defined uh, storage systems are, there are SSDs that are provided within that architecture as well, uh, primarily to store metadata to accelerate the access to, uh, to um, the data, data structure and the actual objects. Let's see. Um, let's see, there was a question about... Um, um, comparisons of uh, some of the uh, competitive metrics. So I, I mentioned we're um, 50 to 70 percent better in TCO than white box solutions. So that would be white box servers and storage. 
and either open, open source uh, software or commercial software. And uh, that range includes open source configurations where data is, is still being stored in, in triplicate, so not necessarily uh, enjoying the benefits uh, of erasure coding. And there are also some uh, comparisons in our press release where we talked about power efficiency and space utilization efficiency. That also is in comparison to white box solutions and also to um, um, uh, typical enterprise class storage systems, uh, uh, usually secondary storage in nature, not, not really in comparison to, uh, to the higher performance uh, systems. Uh, let's see, there's a question about um, our, our routes to market and, and um, um, our VARs or, or solution providers. So the system will be available across all of HGST's spectrum of sales partners. So that includes our OEM partners, that includes system integrators, VARs and solution providers, as well as uh, distributors and cloud service providers. Let's see, um, this says, um, oh, in September it was noted that initial sh shipments could start in November. So yes, so our initial um, revenue on, um, on the Active Archive platform, which is the custom built enclosure, actually started in November. And um, that's being used as a building block for high scale systems uh, by some of our, our partners. Um, so revenue did start in, uh, in November. Um, let's see, we also, and, and we have begun shipments of the, of the Active Archive system it, itself. Um, now, we also have a cloud accessible proof of concept system for the Active Ar Archive system. So for those that want to test out functionality and performance over the cloud, um, they can certainly do that without necessarily uh, bringing a whole system into their data center or committing to, to a system. Let's see. Um, there's a question about um, are are we competing with our current customers or, or OEMs? Um, and the, the short answer is no. So even though this is a large rack uh, level si storage system that may look similar to the offerings of our, our OEM customers, it's designed very specifically for active archive workloads, which are much lower uh, in I.O. density than the systems uh, that, uh, that are in their portfolios. So this is really designed uh, to address that, that underserved part of the market with a very innovative design uh, to achieve the affordability and scalability um, and ease of deployment uh, that we mentioned. So in fact, we, we do have a number of OEMs that are taking those offerings and using them as building blocks to create their own set of offerings uh, in their portfolio. Okay, there's a question on, um, oh, the name, <laughs> Active Archive System. Um, uh, well, the running joke in HGST is that's the one that we pulled out of the hat in, in the naming contest. But um, the reality is that, that this is a new breed of storage system. And, and again, it's designed very specifically for data that's past its create and modify phase and is into the long-term retention phase. Um, so it's lower IO density and it really focuses on, on high value and high resiliency. Um, so the, the notion of, of archive is appropriate because it is old, older data and aging data that we're looking to store, but it needs to be actively accessed. So uh, one question, uh, a logical question to companies that um, are, are amassing big data stores for analytics is, why would you store it if you can't get to it and put it to use? So this really rules out uh, traditional archival methods such as tape where yes you could store it and the cost may be compelling but if you can't get get to it readily to make use of it uh, then it's it's a, a dormant or wasted asset so the the name active archive system is intended to convey that it's used for storage of massive amounts of of data um, for longer and longer periods but that needs to be actively accessed Okay, a question about um, the vertical innovation concept. So, so vertical integration is a very common term in the industry, of course, where 
um, if a company has captive um, supply of key components um, or devices that make up a larger offering that they have, then they can naturally benefit from a cost advantage of, of having that captive source. So we, of course, can enjoy that benefit with our own systems, but we go beyond that with vertical innovation. Vertical innovation means that because we have the know-how of how disk drives are designed and SSDs are designed, and we have the expertise and know-how to build the enclosures and subsystems and, and uh, firmware and abstraction layers that interact with those devices, we can get more out of the devices than if you didn't have that knowledge. And um, uh, along the same lines, at the software level, we can develop software that gets more out of the underlying hardware. So that's the notion of vertical innovation, is that it enables us to get more value out of the individual layers of that stack than would other by, otherwise be available um, outside of uh, that technical expertise. Uh, let's see. Um, do you limit how many drives can be spinning at once in the system? Um, yeah, so, so um, th that's a good question. Uh, no, we design this specifically with the active nature of data in mind. So we want to keep all drives spinning all the time uh, and maintain direct access to that data. Um, anything that would create an application timeout uh, in trying to access the data um, would uh, uh, would pose a problem, right? It would would uh, 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 would be a barrier to users extracting value from from that data. So, our design tenant is uh, to keep all drives active uh, in the system. So I think we have uh, time for just a couple more questions. Um, it's a question about. Um, uh, manufacturing of the system, um, does HCSD build or integrate the entire solution or do you, do you leverage manufacturing partners? So um, we do have a contract manu manufacturing partner that builds the systems uh, for us uh, and also helps to manage uh, logistics for us. Um, so that's a common practice, I think, in the, in the industry. So we're, we're leveraging that, that expertise and that partnership. Um, let's see. Um, again, there was a, a question about the device, uh, devices that are integrated into the system. So, so the, the user space, the 4.7 petabytes of storage capacity, comes 100% from spinning disk. Uh, the system software and the system uh, operation, because it's a, a multi-tier software-defined storage system, also includes SSDs, but it's not for user storage space. It's not storing user objects. In other words, it's being used for system functionality and in particular for uh, the storage of, of metadata um, uh, related to the objects. All right, maybe uh, one more question. Um, uh, is the so solution aimed at cold storage? That's, a, that's an interesting question. So. The, the term cold storage um, we found to be somewhat, um, somewhat ambiguous in that cold storage generally refers to storage used for data that's not hot. So it could mean a lot of different things. It could be cooling data. It could be deep archival data. Um, so active archive, we believe, is probably a subsegment of the broader cold space, but, but we want to be more specific about the use case, and that's why we refer to it as an active archive system as opposed to just a cold storage system. Okay, So I think we're out of time. Uh, thank you again for uh, uh, coming to our special webcast on HCST's announcement of the active archive system today. Um, there's more information, as I mentioned, on our website, um, and we look forward to seeing you in our next ex exciting announcement. Thanks so much.